next episode of uh, Flaming 460. The last time there, it ran pretty good, as far as I could tell. Now, I noticed a little bit of blow-by coming out of the vent tube. It makes me wonder, just, you know, how healthy is this engine? You know, hard to say. Put timing chain in it, so that kind of tells you something that, you know, timing chain was well worn out, so the engine no doubt has a good amount of wear. So at this point, we're going to uh, try and get it warmed up, and then we'll pop all the plugs out. And uh, as per Ford manual, try and give it a compression test, see what we get, see how, see how well it's breathing. I think it's warmed up. I don't think the temperature gauge works. I think there's a low cylinder it's starting to sound a little rough when it warms up. You hear it? That's why I think there might be something wrong with the engine. We'll find out. I can smell it. It's warm. Temperature gauge isn't working, so. Oh, I guess now I'm gonna. some hot plugs. Compression test, and this is the most important part of it. It's number seven. Observe the number of compression strokes required to reach the highest reading. Also, observe the pattern that the engine follows as it builds up the highest compression reading. The compression should build up quickly in a healthy engine. Low compression on the first stroke, followed by gradual increasing pressure on successive strokes, indicates worn piston rings. A low compression reading on the first stroke which does not build up during successive stroke indicates leaking valves or a defective head gasket. Record the highest gauge reading obtained. Repeat the procedure for the remaining cylinders and compare the results. The compression is considered normal if the lowest cylinder reading is within 75% of the highest cylinder reading. Basically that's the, the main important part. The rest of it is good reading so we're going to try and do it as per the firing order we'll start with number one all right and it calls for a, roughly a five stroke turnover so hopefully we can accomplish that so you can see that there red is bad green is good here we go Okay, I'm losing oil compression. Something is not right. My gauge isn't holding its compression. Why not? Alright, 
here, take two. Uh, got the gauge sorted out, so let's see what we got. According to that, let's just double check it. Make sure. Okay. Either there's something really wrong with my gauge or she's low compression. So the first one said 60, let's go with 60. So the next one it calls for is number 5, so that's another one at the front. I wonder if I can reach it from right here, I might be able to reach it from right here. Ooh, hot. No, can't. Alright. This will be number five, it's one, five, four, two, six. Let's see what we got on this one. holding pressure so that one's probably rings first two probably got bad valves that one there I think's probably got bad rings and the valves are probably on the next thing to wear out but yeah they're was holding a bit more pressure than the other ones two we're going to call that 57 Okay, so number six, that's the second one up over there. There, bring it in. Oh, this thing's taking blood. This is number six. All right, see how that one shot up right away? Rings probably aren't too bad in this one, but Again, looking at bad valves, probably worn out cam. Guessing, I'm only guessing. It's a possibility. So we're going to call that one 62. That was 62. That one was 62. Alright, so number three. Number three cylinder, last one on this side. And that one's another 60. We're starting to get a picture here, I think. Regardless of the lower numbers, the gauge is out a bit, you know. It could be a little higher, but I guarantee it's probably worn out though. That one didn't climb very high fast. Probably on that one and valves. So 
was number three, so that side's done. They're within 75% of each other. <laughs> That's uh, let's do number seven here. Oh, that's definitely a 60 shot up right away. So this side of the engine is actually looking happier than the other side. Not quite much, but a little happier. Let's see what we got. 60 again. All right, yeah. check that out. That one's actually holding not too bad. That's dropping down a bit. Could have been it stopped just right. Oh, there it goes. It's leaking down on its own. All right, like I said, I'm still not sure if my old gauge here is having issues or not. If, if, it, if it's 60 across the board, uh, that's pretty pretty low. So that one was, you know, 62 as well. 60, 62, pretty close. Like I said, I'm not sure if the gauge is actually working good. So uh, back to the difficult front one again. We try and put some oil in it. Got my little uh, juice can here for lubiner. And it likes to spray everywhere. Get that in the hole good. Hopefully, it, uh, hopefully I don't overdo it. That's probably more than enough. It's going to smoke when I fire back up again, that's for sure. Hopefully turning it over helps get some of that oil back out of there, but. All right, guys, first round of a uh, wet compression test. Not much higher. Much higher at all. Well, now that it's turned over, this maybe the oil had to get moving around in there first. We'll see. So wet. I'm gonna call it 70. Yeah, it's pretty much up to. So that was 70 wet. Five. All right, we're uh, number five wet. Let's see what it does. We're going to turn it over five times just to get it lubed up, and then we're going to let the arrow and do it again. Uh, so, 62 again. Let's try it once more. Call it 60, 62. Not much better wet or dry on that one. It was 62 the first time there, so we're gonna call it 62. Eight watts. Hopefully it's enough. Shouldn't take much. At least you would think. I'm not 100% sure at the exact specifications of milliliters of oil to put into the cylinder to make things wet. Alright. Turn it over five times and 
with the oil except on that one cylinder which hard to say might have had a gauge problem with it but at this point I think everybody's starting to see the big picture here yeah I guess we should oil number two first and then we'll go front and put the thing in special oil can father used to give me shit for uh, playing with it when I shouldn't have. I'm probably the one that wore it out and made a leak. <clears throat> Alright. Got over five times again. Get it lubed up. And we'll take our reading. So. But these two seem pretty good to be in this. Oh, am I losing my battery? So, that one here was on the gauge, it went up to about 80 ish. We we'll call that one 80. And, uh, hmm. Alright. Well, the first round there, it's on camera. It's, uh, it looked like it went to about 80-ish. We're gonna call it 80. Like I said, everybody's getting the, the main picture already. I think I'm just doing formality now. Finish this off. That looked like 70. It's getting to be even all the way across. A little bit higher with the oil, but not a whole lot, which also tells me that this engine is very worn out. What does it say? It says it has, well, according to that, 923. Uh, we'll see. Oh, my mistake. 92,000 kilometers on it. But they don't line up, so I'm guessing it probably went around like two or three times even. Time and chain was very worn out. I'll give, it a, I'll give you a quick look at the time and chain at the end of the video. Well, what did we say that one was? I think we said it was around 70-ish, so it's not actually going to matter right now. I was hoping it was good. It was good, but hey, this gives us a chance to rebuild it. Wow, that's our highest one yet. We got 80 on that one. Wow, that's a big jump, so that's probably really badly worn out valves on that one. We're just trying to get an idea. Is this engine good or bad? And well, I think it's bad given that it kinda runs good when it's cold, but as soon as it warms up, 
So it's running that again. And that's after doing all the carburetor stuff, you know. We can kind of we can rule out the carburetor completely flooding. There's a little bit of dampness in the, the rear jets, but uh, yeah, I did choke it to get it going, so maybe. Anyway, so let's get this last cylinder out of the way. A 70 ish. So, that is the uh, compression test of this 460. And yeah, 92,000 kilometers. You know, and it used to be a tire truck, so it has a lot of miles. There you guys, here's the old timing chain. It gives you an idea just how worn out it was. You can see the extent of the grooves in the pulley. Like literally the, that chain was just just wore, wore right into it like quite a bit. I don't know if you can see that there, but you can see the hole is even older though. The chain is definitely stretched. Yeah, it's hard to see the teeth, but trust me, it's, uh, it's worn in there. That's many miles, especially when it starts to wear the, uh, wear the teeth right into the teeth of the uh, gear. Well, on a side note, this thing draws blood pretty much every time. I'm pretty sure it doesn't like me revealing its dirty little secrets, but uh, we're going to find out together. Thanks for watching.